What's up guys? Uh, I'm starting a new project. If you can see behind me there, big stand for it. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. This tank behind me here, that's the 55 gallon that I have for my leopards and apomas and my Siamese algae eaters. And I've been wanting to upgrade to a 75 gallon and actually aquascape the tank for quite some time. If you can see, it's literally just wood and bulbatus. It's bare bottom just to keep everything alive and going. Um, but I bought a 75 gallon while I was in, or driving up from Clemson, or driving to Clemson up from Charleston like a week ago. Just built this stand the other day. Just big, classy stand, uh, two by fours. It's pretty easy to do. Look up the videos. I mean, I, I don't I, It's Waru Joey's video, DIY guy. Um, but yeah, so. That's gonna be wrapped in plywood soon, like nice plywood and be like a nice stand and be painted black. And what I'm doing outside now is, it looks white, painting. I'm painting, the sunlight is kind of right in, like reflecting off of it right now, so it's hard to see, but if you can tell, we're painting it black. And when I paint aquariums, I use a uh, plastic. Uh, you may have seen the videos I've done, or if you follow me on Instagram for like a long time, I made a little video where I peeled off the plastic dip to show you guys why I use plastic dip. Uh, it's like a rubber based paint and you spray it on like three or four layers and make sure it's thick enough. And if it's thick enough, you can literally like peel up a corner and peel all of it off. I have another, the 55 gallon, it's hot out here. The 55 gallon was painted with actual like Rust-Oleum paint and it's annoying to like touch. It's got this really annoying texture. So the Plasti Div is like smooth and nice and you can remove it whenever you want. Uh, just make sure you mask everything off. But yeah, I'm working on painting that now. I have two new canister filters coming in the mail. They should be here tomorrow. So I'm got, I've am got i got all this driftwood. I got to pull all the Anubius and Bulbatus off of it so I can actually use it and aquascape with it and then I'm gonna add plants I have a bunch of ADA sand I need to use I may do a planted section, but we'll see um, Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of background before the aquascaping starts All right, so the stand has been painted the back of the tank has been painted I didn't film the actual hardscape because my roommates were in here playing FIFA and I couldn't like film I guess I could have done a time-lapse, but I was just kind of really into it but here it is. Obviously that stone will be leaving once all this stuff sinks, but um, I am pretty stoked about all this. Um, gonna have a lot of botanicals, so that'll help kind of contrast these stones and stuff, but it'll be mostly Anubius, Bulbatus, and some stuff in the back. I wanna do a lily somewhere and crinum somewhere, and we'll see on a lot of different things, but I'm actually very excited about all this right now. But I'm going to fill it up, put it on time-lapse, go from there. All right, I lied about the time-lapse, but um, I actually accidentally didn't record. I thought it was recording, but it wasn't. But anyway, it's the next day. Everything is kind of full. There's no more bubbles on the walls and whatever. Um, that rock may come off sooner than I anticipated. Obviously, it's very cloudy. I added a lot of planted tank substrate in the back. So... This whole back area up to about there in the back, that'll be planted. I wanted to do crinum, but it's hard to get large amounts of crinum, and I'm not sure how that would look. But I do have a lot of cryptocorn balance, uh, and I may just stick some of that back there and see how that does. And then I'm thinking a lily right here and a lily down in here, where I'll add more uh, contrasoil, obviously. But, um, I'm really liking this. I think it's really cool. Um, Bulbatus and Anubius are going to be added soon as well, so I'll probably put it on time lapse and start just throwing uh, plants in. All right, I've got my bucket full of plants. We've got um, Crips Balance. Like I said, I accidentally ripped off that big root on the bottom, like the thick mother root that they have. So hopefully this one doesn't die, but I think there's five or six others in there. And then the rest is all is all Anubius. Most of it being non petite, but we have a a Bartiri Bartiri in there, a Coffee Folia, and the Alf Zelly, which is one of my personal favorites, is already in here. Uh, two of those guys. I'm gonna add more of those because I like the way they grow vertical. 
Um, but yeah, I'm gonna probably just throw this on the tripod and film. And knowing me, it'll probably get into like time lapse mode. But yeah, I'll probably do some commentary. And if it's nothing important and I just start focusing on what I'm doing, I'll just turn it into a time lapse. These dead leaves, you want to remove those because it's only causing the plant more, it's causing the plant to work harder to grow new leaves and stay alive. So if you remove the old damaged stuff, it allows new growth to come easier. So I'm taking all these ones that are covered in blackbeard algae off. Anything that doesn't look very healthy, just removing it. That's fine. And then a lot of times all of these roots you don't need and trimming roots can stimulate new root, gro root growth. So you want to kind of snip those so that you have just a little bit for obviously the plant to be healthy and growing new roots out of. This is going to be a bigger one so I'm going to have to position it in a meaningful location. When you get bigger rhizomes of Anubias like this, like this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 leaves on it, you want to break it apart so it can grow more. So like if you break off, I usually break off like four or five leaf parts at a time, or just you want to kind of look at, you know, how much rhizome there is. So I'll probably break it right about there. And that one has seven leaves or so. And then this one could be broken in half again. And that just has, that's just how you propagate Anubias for the most part. This is a smaller one, four leaves. This one's got five, six, seven, eight leaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these both have eight leaves. So now you have three little Anubias that'll grow a longer rhizome. And now you have, you know, you just tripled the amount of plant you have. <laughs> much much bigger than the Anubias so I'm gonna grab a few pieces and try to mock some stuff up <laughs> all right so the tank is basically pretty much planted there's a few more things I'll be changing obviously as I, the tank grows and matures but um, for the most part it's done so I'll show you guys what it looks like now I wanted to use as much Anubias in the front as I could. I may do some Bucephalandra. I've been saying that about multiple tanks though. So uh, who knows when that's actually gonna happen. There's no fish in here yet. I got both filters running now, a little bit of uh, biological media to get everything cycled and ready for those guys. Um, but yeah, so I added, there's a bunch of Bulbatus back here. There's one back here behind this piece and on the back of this one as well as in here and that's mainly like kind of how I wanted to have it I wanted to have Anubias all around the rocks and I'm gonna like probably 
add some more down here in this little area. And then I want to have Anubius basically like climbing up this piece. And I honestly don't know after that. Um, I added, that's a bulb down there. If you can see right there, that's a, a lily bulb. So that's a dwarf lily. It's going to get nice and red right in this little area and grow up. I want to get another one here. So I think, I think that would be really nice. And then the Crypt Balance is doing well in these two back areas there and here. Um, obviously this stone ruins everything, but um, hopefully in a few days or weeks or whatever, that will be gone. Um, but yeah, I really like the tank. I think it's really cool. I threw this guy in here because he had nowhere else to go. It's a gold rabbit snail. But I mean, still cloudy obviously. Haven't done a water change on it yet. Just filled it and planted it. I really, really like this scape. But another thing is, um, this is very different from how I initially planned on aquascaping this. Originally I wanted to do um, very dark. I wanted to do spotlights, like four spotlights and have it semi-lit and then have all just sandy on the bottom no planted areas, just lots of driftwood, just randomly kind of place, kind of like roots, and then had a lot of bulbatus and a lot of Anubis on it. Um, obviously we went more of like an island composition, triangular composition kind of thing, but I think it went really well. But now that I have this huge open space, I'm considering keeping some other fish with these guys. So let me know what you guys would keep with these. The stocking right now is going to be four or five leopard tinnipomas. I have four right now. I may get another one if I can find a bigger one. Um, seven Siamese algae eaters, probably some nearite snails, and then the rest is really up in the air. Um, I was thinking about adding some more Siamese algae eaters or adding some Madagascan rainbow fish or something like that, but I really haven't decided. Some, some like sand sifting stuff, maybe some geophagus like some really small ones would be really cool in here but we'll see keep in mind no catfish unless it's like cyanodontis those may work but anything that the leopards can fit in their mouths they will eat and if it's a catfish the barbs are going to get stuck in their mouths and they'll both kill themselves basically um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching an update will come out on this once the fish are in and once it's grown a little bit probably a few weeks if i do anything else in between then i'll let you guys know um, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you next time.